Welcome to episode five of the Non-Fun Gerbils podcast. We're back today with a surprise half-month episode. There won't be a new gerbil NFT announced today, but there will be an interview. We'll explain a little bit more at the end, but for now, we hope you enjoy our conversation with John Crane of Super Rare, the pioneering marketplace that auctions one-of-a-kind artworks as NFTs. They describe themselves as Instagram meets Robin Hood, creating a new way to interact with art, culture, and collecting on the internet. Enjoy! <laughs> John Crane from Super Rare, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Not at all. It's great. It's great to have you on. Um, we've met here and there occasionally, um, at uh, usually at a conference somewhere, and you've got all these uh, wonderful artworks up on the wall and um, ready to ready to chat everything NFT. Um, and you've 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 really begun to to dominate the space with Super Rare, certainly from a sort of the gallery uh, curation perspective. Um, but before we jump into that, um, why don't you give us a bit about your background and how you got into the cryptocurrency NFT world? Um, yeah, take it take it away. All right. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Really excited. Um, so yeah, my background is you know in software. I was working in advertising and consumer tech in New York, uh, which is kind of where I got into Bitcoin. There was uh, some pretty good local Bitcoin meetups, and you know I was kind of crypto curious and kind of just fell down the rabbit hole. Uh, so I was doing some tinkering, saw Ethereum and smart contracts, uh, which I was actually very skeptical of at first. And then, you know, the network launched and I was tinkering around and I got super excited and kind of just quit my day job and went full full time. Um, so I started working with Consensus and Bushwick and did a lot of work with one of their spokes block apps, uh, which was kind of focused on enterprise Ethereum and still had you know the consumer app kind of background you know agency life of um you know like fun consumer things and when i saw crypto kitties come out i was like okay this is it like this is the standard that's going to power sort of this whole space in this part of the revolution so i decided to um go full time there and that was about two years two years ago in uh 2017 and we launched super rare i think about six months later april uh 2018 so it's been an exciting uh exciting ride so far so um give us a give us a sort of rundown of what super rare is as a as a platform sure so yeah super rare is a platform and marketplace uh you know kind of building we like to think of it as like you know the infrastructure for part of art you know, the creative economy in this, you know, Web3 uh, revolution. So it's a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace where we have artists and collectors coming together and uh, exchanging uh, purely digital art. Awesome. It's always really exciting just to jump on and see, you know, all, all, the, all the new creations appearing. How, how does someone go through the process of getting their artwork onto super rare do you, do you guys curate what goes on the platform or is it is it just a process of uploading it or how, how does that work sure yeah really good question um you know when we started the project you know we kind of thought of ourselves as like you know a little bit of the anti-gallery you know like the whole ethos of the internet is like you can kind of create whatever you want there's room for all all types of expression um but at the same time we really felt like you know if these uh, digital objects are going to actually have value. People do need to be able to trust that, you know, they are unique, one of a kind artworks. And so uh, we have a vetting process with the artists. And, you know, that's pretty, um, it's pretty good. You've been working on it for about a year and a half. Uh, but we basically, you know, often we'll do an interview with them. They'll apply with a video, some samples of their work, and then a lot of their other social profiles to kind of give us some reference um, so we can kind of dig into who they are, you know, what kind of art they're working on. Um, and then from there, if they, you know, things go well, uh, after the vetting process, then there, we add them to the super rare smart contract and they can kind of, you know, create as they will. Have you ever had an artist that wants to stay anonymous? 
So we we have. This is actually, you know, somewhat frequent. You get people emailing you from Proton emails. And, you know, sometimes that's exciting. You're like, oh, my word, this is quite a character we have here. Um, and, you know, we're OK with, uh, you know, pseudo anonymity. But we do uh, like, you know, we've had people do like, when they upload the video, you can't see their face. They've kind of altered the voice. Um, but we just really want to dig in and make sure they're, you know, it's fine if it's a persona for an artist, but just want to make sure that it's actually them creating the work and there's some proof. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. In terms of uh, the sort of the artists and the collectors, how, how's that looking in terms of numbers? I get the sense that, uh, you know, the, the artwork numbers are, are, are pretty good it's 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 more about the other side of the market how, how, how's that playing out currently on your platform yeah so it's you know it's been pretty amazing to see we basically don't do any paid marketing um you know other than like going to conferences and talking to people um you could probably consider that paid marketing but um it's been super organic growth you know often collectors are people who are already in the space and interested in nfts and they often get brought in by a collector friend of theirs uh, who's on the platform. So right now, I think we have about 400 active collectors. And so we qualify an active collector as somebody uh, who's made a purchase or placed a bid. So any kind of uh, trans like monetary transaction uh, over the past six months. And then as far as general collectors, there's a couple thousand who joined up on the platform and are, um, you know, kind of at least poking around, you know, looking at art, things like that. Do you have a figure for sort of how many artists are on there as well? Yeah. So right now, I believe we have 171 artists uh, who are part of the community. Okay. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, that's a lot of creative people. It certainly is. All over the world, too. It's pretty cool. Um, even the collector base is uh, pretty distributed. I think if you look, most of our traffic, about half of it comes from the US, and then the other half, it's Japan is pretty popular. Italy, I think, is second most popular. Uh, I believe the UK, I think, is number four as far as traffic goes. So, uh, yeah, it's been pretty exciting to see that kind of grow and evolve. Often it'll be like one collector will, or one artist will kind of drive traffic. We'll, so they'll, we'll see somebody new join. And then you can tell that, you know, they're telling their friends and that sort of thing. Ah, uh, yes. Bringing their network over. Exactly. Do you, do you collect yourself? I mean, do you do you have like a big collection of items that you've like bid on and bought? Oh, yep, absolutely. Yeah, at this point. So I, I collected art, uh, you know, before uh, building Super Rare. I have some friends uh, who are gallerists and run galleries. And, you know, it wasn't a huge, you know, a huge, you know, part of my portfolio living in uh, my art investments and collection. But um. Uh, yeah, so I was collecting before, but now I think my digital collection has surpassed uh, my physical collection, which um, when I started a pro the project, I wasn't, you know, that wasn't something I set out to do. It just sort of slowly happened over time. And do you collect from other from other places as well? Um, so, yep, it, it like, I, you know, as an early person in the space, I think, um, you know, I've got some early crypto punks and yeah, you know, there's. There's a lot happening at this time. So there's other platforms where people do additions, things like that. So it's, you know, kind of always poking around and following what the artists are up to. Are there sort of plans in the works for uh, uh, allowing people to uh, sort of create additions on Super Rare? Can you, can you do that already? Uh, yeah. So this is a very good question. Um, we actually originally when we launched, we did have additions and then we removed that feature. Um, I think uh, for the collector, it's a lot better if the piece is one of one. And it also helps with uh, pricing. So some of the early tests that we were doing uh, with users and like just like getting feedback is that it's sort of like cognitively difficult to know how to price something that's like, like if it's there's addition of five versus an addition of 10, but you don't really do anything different to create the extra supply. It was a little harder to know, like, okay, the five are more scarce than the 10 are versus like 12, uh, where if it's just one, it's super simple. It's easy for users to understand. And so 
um, we decided to go that route. So at the moment, um, we don't have any plans to to allow people to offer additions. Um, and it seems like, you know, there's some other there's other uh, platforms and things where if you do want to like a lot of our artists do their addition work on other platforms. And then super is the place for the you know high value one of one items. Gotcha. And and how are people generally creating these these artworks? Because one gets the sense when you're looking at them that some feel like they've they've taken a huge amount of time and effort to sort of concept and 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 actually create some some of course you know have moving elements to them some are static um and then there are there are others that you look at and you know everyone comes to this to artwork differently right but there are others that you look at and go well you know that's that's pretty simple or at least it looks like that to me (laughs) um um, and do, do you see do you see people gravitate to one kind of artwork than another you know in terms of the moving to the static or uh, do you do you get a sense that those people who are doing this almost full-time and promoting themselves full-time and trying to sort of make a living to it do they do they find success um yeah so i think that yeah a couple questions there but to answer the first one i think like the gifts are definitely more or you know like animation like the one the um, pieces of art with animation in the art definitely sell better. I think last time we ran the numbers was about uh, 45% of the sales are animated or like, you know, um, animated file formats. Um, But that said, I think it was like about 70% of the market value. So even though it was less than half, it was a much higher percent, you know, um, they go for more. Yeah. And as far as how they're created, that's super varied. So there's a lot of mixed media. So there's a lot of traditional artists who are kind of coming into this space and experimenting. So it might be some portion of it's physical and then they digitize it and then they'll start tweaking and animating certain components or potentially, you know, adding different layers. And then, you know, it's really, it's quite, it's across the board. Uh, We also have, you know, more technical artists. So they're using, you know, tools like processing or open frameworks. Um, so some portion of it might be digitized from the physical form, and then they're using some of these tools to kind of programmatically or generative, generatively uh, alter the art. Uh, so it really, it really depends. Each artist uh, has a pretty distinct process. And do they? Do you see that they spend quite a lot of time communicating what they're doing outside of the platform? Like, do, do they? They run their own Twitter feeds, and they. They basically you know, produce their own community. So ev- everyone's basically doing their own community outreach as well as super rare um, uh, picking ones occasionally to show or to, to back in some way. Yeah. So I think um, a lot of the traffic is coming from Twitter. And so you'll see the really successful artists getting pretty detailed. So, you know, they might put out a new work and then you'll see a long tweet storm kind of detailing how the process uh, unfolded. Uh, recently, there was an artist, uh, Matt Kane, who joined the community, and um, he's yeah, he's you know out of the gate, he's been pretty successful, and that's something he does. So he has some pretty interesting software tools he's developed himself that is part of his process, and he kind of I can, I'm happy to share it with you guys. It's super interesting, but just to see kind of the thought and time that goes into the digital work, which isn't you know like you said, it's not always obvious. To an outsider yeah and i think it's really important because that sense that sense of um sort of story of what's gone in gone into it like it's, it's when you have a physical artwork you can get up close to it and you know you can see the brush strokes and you think my god you know that must have taken you know three minutes or th- three years depending depending on the picture right yeah um, and sometimes it's hard to get it's hard to get that sense from from digital media um so i guess that story becomes very important and so I can imagine a lot of time, I mean, you know, modern artists spend a lot of time and energy building a, a community as well, um, getting in the right galleries, getting in the right magazines, that kind of thing. Um, but I suspect that that's, that's probably a very important part of being an artist in this new, in this new area is, is to be able to sort of communicate a lot more about your, your artwork. Because I find myself, it's funny, you know, you, you look at these websites and it's just, you know, there's a lot of, well, wow, you look at you know super rare. There's quite a lot to take in immediately. You can you know you can scroll through, um, yeah, and 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 sometimes context is is super important. 
Yeah, no, it's, I think it's essential. And like you said, especially for, you know, a digital medium where you can't, you know, exactly go look at the brushstrokes and see. Um, and it's, you know, it's something we're thinking about and working on, you know, like, um, I don't know if you're familiar with crypto voxels, but there's a lot of interesting stuff happening with like, yeah, VR galleries. And I think, you know, we're doing our own internal experimenting with things just like, how can you give, uh, you know, something like this more context and, um, you know, make it a little more tactile, kind of like that feeling you get um, when you do go to a gallery and you're appreciating a piece of work. How are you guys promoting Super Rare? Um, are, you, are you doing it uh, specifically to sort of the sort of the niche crypto area at the moment? Or are you looking outwards towards uh, the, the, the wider art market? Sure. So, yeah, I think the first... You know, the first the first phase or the you know, this first year we were super focused on the crypto community. Um, we were like, you know, people understand digital scarcity. They're used to, you know, collecting digital assets already. And this year we've done a little bit more um sort of external outreach. I think in general it's still pretty early. So, you know, we've talked to, you know, hundreds of galleries, met with people. Everyone's very fascinated that you know, they're like wait, what are mm -hmm. you talking yep. about? This is, you know, <laughs> absolutely crazy. Um, and so, you know, one thing that has resonated with a lot of the, uh, you know, more traditional galleries is, um, you know, talking about VR and that this is, you know, art that belongs in VR. I think when we first started, we were looking at a lot of like digital frames for homes, um, which are super cool, but it doesn't, you know, I there, it felt like, uh, there's something a little off with that story. So now a lot of the sort of outreach we're doing to bring in more traditional gallery players and institutions is kind of talking about AR and VR and like, you know, here's a way for somebody who is a VR artist, um, to, you know, to authenticate and register their work. And um, so we do, we're doing lots of education. I think it's still kind of early for any of the big galleries to jump in, but we're fighting the good fight. That's for sure. I guess if um, any of these virtual world platforms really take off, then that's going to super accelerate the digital art market or the, the NFT art. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's actually something we've seen, I think, um, with, you know, crypto voxels is still very niche. You know, all my, you know, friends who have normal jobs have no idea what I'm talking about when I'm showing them, you know, my, my <laughs> VR gallery. But um it really resonates. And I think like you're talking about, it just gives it so much more context and it gives the, you know, each collector kind of sees something different in a, you know, an object they want to acquire. And it makes it really cool because it's not just a static web page you're looking at. They've built a space specifically for the piece of art. So it's, um, I was talking to a collector recently and I was like, wow, you're almost turning into an artist yourself because you're designing this space for a specific piece of art and like the, you know, the level of detail you're thinking about and like how you want to, how you want other people to come experience that piece of art is, you know, pretty impressive. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I really enjoy walking around crypto voxels just, just to see what's new. And, you know, I, on my Twitter feed, you know, I get, I, I, I see, you know, those, those tweets appear that just land you in a different, a different place, you know, and I think that's, I think that's really cool. Clearly, we need much more of the spaces in which people can show what they have, and I think, I think, I think that'll come. Um, you know, maybe you know there'll also be things like you know Decentraland and other things like that. Obviously, where that where that you know might be able to happen. Although I suspect that crypto voxels might might have the run on them from the from the art gallery perspective. <laughs> yeah, um, it's taken off for sure. Um, but but also, I guess people people need to. To sort of show these things on their phones um it would be great if there was a bit of sort of cross-pollination through to the social media world a bit um i guess that'll come in time but but how, how do you see the the sort of the signaling side of things progressing yeah it's a it's a super good question i you know um i it's very often at least we see from the super rare community you know people are like tweeting about a bidding war that happened it's like you know ongoing they're like super pissed they just got outbid or you know like it's pretty hilarious uh some of the stuff we're seeing and then also just like tweeting about something in their new collection so it's super natural and 
it's also it's you know it's kind of a shift from more physical like most of the physical art that i was buying was something more private that i just like had in my house i wasn't you know tweeting about it or anything um but you really have the urge to do so with this space you know i guess just because it doesn't you know live in your house and it is a little more ephemeral so it also helps give the art context when i tweet about it and share it and i yeah it's really about finding like the right way to integrate so you know that's something we experiment with a lot or you know just try to think about how it's going to fit together but i definitely see those things merging i think the social profiles that we have on super rare are a big part of you know what's helping fuel the community you know you see people who have specific avatars and usernames um often they're shared with twitter you know so people are like kind of like bringing in their existing digital identity into the platform and it's a huge driver so i think the more of that um that's there the more active the you know the ecosystem will be thinking about bidding wars um how have you set up your auction mechanisms i mean what do you use for that sure um so right now it's all it's all on chain which is kind of cool because you get uh interesting data and people are talking about eth locked in DeFi. We always joke about the ETH locked in crypto art um, because it gets escrowed. So right now it's a pretty straightforward uh, English auction, and but there's no time limit. So you can just outbid somebody. The other person gets their escrowed money back and you now have an existing bid uh, placed on the art. Um, so it's super simple. Artists get a notification that they have a new bid. Um, they can choose to accept it and but on the flip side, a collector can also withdraw their bid. So uh, the next version of this, I think, will have a time lock and um, be a slightly more more sophisticated auction mechanism. Right. So because you never you never really know you've 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 won it till you've won it, I guess. So you, you, you can sit there for a while and uh, and that kind of from a from a from a seller's perspective, you know, there's lots of shiny things out there, right? And I can, I yeah. can, I can, I can leave a bid, and then I can see something that I, I might prefer and withdraw. And so, so I, I guess some, I suspect some people are looking forward to that that time element to be, to be placed. Absolutely, and we've actually seen, you know, a number of artists kind of start doing it manually. So they'll say, you know, uh, like Coldy, who's one of, you know, good friend and popular artist uh, in the community started he has his own private reserve price and so he'll announce the reserve has been met anyone who bids higher in the next 24 hours like after the window closes uh you know the piece is yours and so you know this is fully trust based um so i think we you know that it's kind of great because they're it's sort of evolving and showing us what kind of features we should be adding to the platform um and so i think thinking about those we're probably going to go in that direction oh that's great it's great to have a, a test bed um, yeah, where it's all playing out already. Absolutely, very lucky that it's such an active community. It's very exciting. Can you um, talk a little bit about what it was? Um, what it was like building the platform and how it differed to building things that you've built in the past, and what what, what was difficult, what was easy, and, and where do you start? Sure. Um, so you know, just having you know, been working in the space prior, we kind of knew how you know what. We knew a little bit what would be hard and what would be difficult. It was um, it's definitely not the first application we built on top of Ethereum. Um, so we kind of started with the API layer. Uh, Charles, our CTO, also worked with me at Consensus. So he kind of got started on the back end stuff. And I was focused on, with my partner, Jonathan, on kind of the branding and UI. So we did a lot of research with, and just like, being in New York, you know, there's lots of great agencies and I had lots of agency friends. Um, so I kind of was, you know, sat down with a lot of my branding uh, friends and kind of was just talking through this. They all they were they were not crypto people. So they were just like, this is so weird. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, it's a great name, though. It's a great. Thank name. you. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was kind of a good story. So the name of our company, you know, on paper is Pixura which is sort of like the original name I came up with. You know, it's kind of a more, you know, I have like a UX engineering background, so it sounds like an engineering name. And then two different friends who I was kind of talking through the, you know, what we were doing and like what the branding should be like. 
We're like, yeah, I don't know. Like that name you came up with is just like not very good. Like what if it was just something like super rare? You know, it's something you could say at a bar and like people remember in the morning. And two different people within a week of each other suggested that, you know, we call the, the everything super rare. So that's kind of <laughs> that's what we went with. And I think it was we a do good that choice. as well when we're talking about scarce things now, like super yeah. rare. Is sort of, it comes to mind. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. You, you just got handed solid gold. That's awesome. Abs- when that happens. <laughs> Absolutely. I was like, this is too much of a coincidence. I think we're going to have to go with this. It is. It is a great name. But um, as far as the build goes, you know, like that was something we you know, the I thought the branding and design was going to be super important just because it is such an esoteric concept. So we put a lot of time and effort into, you know, making it a place where we thought, you know, the art looks really cool. Like, I think it's, you know, definitely an important, you know, you go to Gagosian or one of these galleries and it's blank walls and the wall the art is like super you know it's highlighted it's very present and you know, the other stuff's kind of in the background um and so we tried to do a little bit of that just to really make the focus on the art in the future do you see yourself like like you know how you might do like an impressionist sale at Sotheby's or a pre-raphaelite or an old masters you know they they sort of stratify and then and then they bring you know the specific people that like that specific genre like into the room all together to like basically bid against each other um um now you know digital art crypto art probably hasn't stratified itself yet into specific niches i guess or verticals but um did you foresee in the future being able to do that kind of thing like sort of create a uh uh uh, the kind of like you know digital version of lots of different people in the room that are all vying to try and get a particular uh, uh, type of art. Yep, uh, absolutely. So one of the sort of experiments and things we're playing with now is running uh, exhibitions with curators. So we're partnering with existing curators, uh, you know, who have expertise in you know architecture or different things, and kind of talking through the concept getting them on board with, you know, like a VR gallery. And so we're actually going to be announcing the, this is going to be the first one we're going to do, um, I think in the next couple of days, but, um, yeah, I think it's super important and also just helps give everything more context. Like you said, so knowing that a piece of art was in one of these exhibitions and kind of rallying that community around people who are super into, you know, generative art or, you know, mixed media, that sort of thing. I think it's a super powerful tool. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Well, I I look forward to um to keeping an eye on all of that. Um I'm very new to the to your site. Um I I mean I've always been looking at it, but I've only recently sort of joined up. Um and uh, not being an artist myself, I'm probably more on the collector side of things. Um, Me too. Um but you never know. I I think what I quite like about uh, 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 this because I spent some time. Um, what one of our previous uh, interviews is Jake Bruckman from Coin Fund, who runs this this thing called First Edition, and was also involved in the uh, 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 additional app um, that I think sadly is no longer with us. But um, that that really spurred me on to think about. Okay, well, could could I could I do this? I mean, I I'm not the world's most creative person, but but I find that these this sort of, you know, this burst of creativity that I'm seeing on these platforms is inspiring me to think about, well, what could I do? Um, and, and hopefully that, that, you know, transfers through to, to more people who are coming They're not just artists as in like, I was an artist in my old life. Now I'm a crypto artist. Um, but actually like, <laughs> I've never been an artist, but I think I could give this a go. Um, sure. that, that would be cool. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sort of, I'm definitely a collector, but I, I have aspirations, put it that way. <laughs> right yeah yeah it's absolutely i you know i you check super multiple times every day and you know when i was in school actually the reason i started programming is because i saw some processing art and i was like oh this is awesome like i love to you know i have a sketchbook and i draw um and that's actually how i learned to program was trying to do these processing sketches uh just because i was like fascinated by the idea i was like you could just use random numbers and like make a little algorithm and it can make some art like this is amazing so i've yet to you know myself become a crypto artist but um you know 
Maybe there's one day. Pl- there's, there's plenty of time. It's on the horizon. <laughs> George, me and you can put a show together. You know, it could be our debut. Oh, that's a that, that's a fantastic idea. Two right. total art newbies, yes, um, um, creating digital art. Do do people just a quick quick one? Do do people um, do you get much photography on the site? Because that's that's fairly different from the digital. It's not it's not the the photoshopping and the the the, the generative algorithmic work. It's 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 you know people taking photos. So I guess that's a that could be a, a, a an easy access point into creating digital art. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we're, it's something we talk a lot about and we're actually in the, pro, you know, kind of like product iteration. So trying to figure out the UX around it. Um, Cause in my mind it is, you know, it's distinctly different than a totally, right. know, uh, you know, like a piece that like somebody completely created on their own. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, photography is an absolute art form. I'm also not a good photographer myself, <laughs> but very much appreciate it. You know, you can see some of this. Uh, art here yeah absolutely and so we're just really thinking about the form factor and how to best display it so it's something we're you know we are adding but um we're just thinking through the ux and doing a lot of research around you know how could you have these two different so like you know different types of art kind of sit together but then also be distinctly different yeah great Okay, fantastic. Well, I, you know, thank you so much for 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 you know filling us in and giving us a, a really great picture of your of your project. Um, it, I know it's sort of front and center of this very small niche little world that we're building, but I feel like it's growing. Um, there are some f- fantastic projects out there, and every every day I get more and more FOMO. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, my co- my collection's definitely growing, even thanks to this podcast. Um, Perfect. Um, so so um, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely going in the right direction. Um, Luke, have you uh, got any other other ideas, things to add? I was going to ask if you have any uh, new features that you you've got planned on the horizon, or or other projects that you're working on, other than the uh, the auction uh, time locked auction. Sure. Um, Yeah. So I think, you know, one of the things we're most excited about and thinking about is, you know, the sort of like the explosion in VR and how can, you know, how can we have a tighter integration with kind of just these, these VR worlds and, you know, this experimentation that's happening there. So um, yeah, it's still, still early on, but we're thinking, you know, we're thinking a lot about that. I think, uh, you know, it's really a great place to kind of experience the art when you're in one of these VR worlds. And so we're we're going down that rabbit hole. Mm. And we also hope we're launching a mobile app uh, next year. So oh, nice. it'll also be exciting. Awesome. Are you full time on the project? Are you, you uh, doing other things as well? Yep. Full time on Super Rare uh, at the moment, bootstrapping. So um, just super focused on community growth and product development. It uh Feels good. Cool. Amazing. Well, listen, ha- uh, good luck. Keep, 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 uh, keep pushing it. Um, and um, I'm certainly going to uh, uh, start a little super rare collection, I think, because I saw some stuff on there this morning that I really liked. Um, it might take me a little longer to get around to uploading anything. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe in well, a year yeah. or so. We'll see. We I'll start the concept in... stage now. There we go. We'll stay in touch and we'll, we'll get the show <laughs> together. <laughs> brilliant stuff john thank you so much um for for, for joining us um yeah. and um we'll we'll have you back on when when some of those features are enabled and we'll we'll go through it again and, and see how things have changed i love it yeah george and luke really appreciate it thanks so much for having me on thanks very much Not at all thank you mate great stuff well that that was uh, uh really interesting it was great to talk to john let's have a little chat about how John sits in between uh, uh, the gerbil episodes. Yeah, so we've decided that there's so many great guests that we want to speak to. We're going to up the episode count a little bit and uh, get in some half-month episodes. But we're going to keep the gerbils to just one a month, is that right? Yeah, that's right. For now, we're going to keep the gerbils at at one a month. We're going to keep to our original schedule because we're not going to put in a, a mid-month episode every month no so although we'll try of course we'll, we'll yeah we'll give it a go <laughs> it's great that there are so many people out there who are interesting and working in this space 
to, to, to talk to, as well as others that aren't actually working in the space but are still interesting. Yeah. Um, which I think we've got it. We're going to have a few coming up. Um, so there's loads of, there's just so many interesting people, and we felt like it would be a good idea to to record them and get them out there sooner rather than later. Plus, we, we kind of had a year and a half's worth of guests, you know, lined up. <laughs> And uh, that doesn't give us scope to add any extra in there if we if we do it at one a month. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Great stuff, Luke. Well, um, I'm really pleased about uh, about how this has all gone so far. Yeah. And um, you know, uh, let's just let's just keep finding uh, more brilliant people. Yeah, yeah. We've had some great feedback as well so far on on how we're running the podcast and uh, what people like to hear and what they don't like to hear and. Uh, what they'd like to see from the gerbils in the future. Exactly. Yeah, more feedback, the better. Um, and also, uh, I guess a half-month uh, podcast uh, uh, would be a good time just to update people on the current gerbil. Yeah, 100x leverage gerbil. Uh, we've we've had really, really good entries this, this time. It's going to be very difficult to choose, but... Um, that's a that's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have, yeah, for sure. Obviously, that it resonated with with some people as good story fodder. Absolutely. Well, we 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 we're, we're getting some fantastic entries in. Um, when this episode goes out, just know that um, there's there's still time to get your hundred x leverage gerbil entry in, and get a uh, bespoke piece of artwork made to that entry. And um, yeah, I think uh, I'm really looking forward to reading them out on the next one. After this drops, um, get it in very, very quickly because we will be closing entries after this this episode comes out. Okay. Um, because we've got to have a little bit of time for our artists to uh, work their magic. But yeah, tune into Twitter for that. Great stuff. All right, Luke, till next time. Great. Yeah, see you next time. Cheers, mate. Bye. Bye.